Welcome to Goodwill Industries of the Columbia. In order to work safely at your site, there is a procedure you need to be aware of. It is hazardous energy control, commonly known as lockout tagout. In this presentation, you'll learn about the forms of hazardous energy and how to prevent it from injuring you or one of your coworkers. First, what is hazardous energy? Hazardous energy exists either when equipment or materials can be activated, such as a machine being turned on, or when there is stored or potential energy, like pressurized air or heat. Examples of this can be seen all around you. This computer runs on electricity. A coiled spring contains mechanical energy. Cars use both hydraulic energy or pressurized fluid in their braking systems and pneumatic energy or pressurized air in their tires. Chemicals contain energy in the form of potential fires or explosions, and thermal energy, or heat, exists in water heaters and pipes. Even gravity can be considered a potential form of hazardous energy if a large item could fall or roll onto someone and cause an injury. Let's pause for a moment to answer question one on your quiz. What kind of energy could the steaming cup of coffee pictured here contain? Please pause the video if you need more time. When it comes to controlling hazardous energy, OSHA defines two kinds of users. The first and most common are effective users. These are employees who operate equipment or work in the area where maintenance is performed. For example, if a maintenance worker came into work on a lighting fixture in an area where you work, you would be an effective user. An authorized user is someone who performs service or maintenance on a machine. In our agency, this could be our maintenance technician or someone from an outside company. Question number two contains an example. Martha is a forklift driver. While she is working in the warehouse, George is repairing the baler. What kind of user is Martha? There are two methods we use together to prevent the release of hazardous energy. The first is lockout. These are just a few of the many types of lockout devices. The first picture contains a lockbox that prevents equipment from being plugged in. The second picture shows covers that prevent the handles of the valves from being turned. In the third, you can see covers over the breakers, which prevent them from being flipped and energizing the circuit. Items such as blocks and wheel chocks can also be used to prevent injuries from falling or rolling objects. Each of these lockout devices is used with a specially issued lock. The authorized user carries the key to the lock and is the only one that can remove it from the equipment when it is safe to use. There are many, many types of lockout devices, but they all have one thing in common. Lockout devices physically prevent the release of energy. The second method used is tag out. Tagging out does not physically prevent the release of energy the way that locking out does. Tagging out notifies all users that equipment is unsafe to operate, whether because it is malfunctioning or because someone is working on it. You may not be able to see what is wrong with equipment or be able to see who is working on it, but that doesn't mean it is safe to use. You should never, never remove a tag or attempt to operate any type of equipment that has been tagged or locked out. Lockout and tag out are used together. Lockout physically prevents energy from being released and tag out notifies users that equipment should not be activated. Quiz question three. What is the main difference between lockout and tag out? So what should you do if you find that equipment is unsafe to operate? First, notify your manager or supervisor. They will complete the following steps. Step one, notify all affected employees that you are locking out the equipment. Ensure that the equipment is shut down. Step two, disconnect the equipment from the power source and dissipate energy if you need to. 
This could mean lowering the forks on the forklift all the way to the ground and then turning it off and removing the key, or simply unplugging electrical equipment. Step three, get a tag, lockout device, and lock from the store's kit. Lock out the equipment using an appropriate device. Using the examples we saw before, this could mean locking the forklift key in a box or using a lock box over the plug of the equipment. Complete the tag and secure it in an obvious place, such as the place you would normally turn on the equipment. Step four. Finally, after checking to make sure no one is exposed, perform a safety check on the equipment by attempting to turn it on or operate it. Quiz question four. Who should you contact to lock out equipment? To answer quiz question five, you may need to seek help from a coworker. Where is your facility's lockout kit located? Let's review our quiz questions. If there are any questions you haven't finished on the quiz yet, please pause this and finish questions before completing. Question number one. What kind of energy does the cup of coffee have? If you answered thermal energy or heat, you are correct. You could potentially be burned by hot coffee. Though there's fluid in this cup, it doesn't qualify as hydraulic energy because the contents are not under pressure. Question number two. Martha is a forklift driver. While she is working in the warehouse, George is repairing the baler. What kind of user is Martha? Martha is an affected user. She isn't repairing or servicing equipment, but she needs to be aware that George is working on equipment so she doesn't activate anything that could hurt him. Question three, what is the main difference between lockout and tagout? Answer, locking out physically prevents equipment from being operated. Tagging out notifies all employees that the equipment should not be used. Question four, who should you contact to lock out equipment? Answer, contact your manager on duty to help you through the process. It's important that we do this so that the managers can pass the key off at each shift until maintenance is able to come and repair the equipment. Question five, where is your facility's lockout kit located? Answer, you should be shown this kit during your safety orientation. If you don't know where it is, ask someone to show you. 